There are a lot of naturally occurring alkenes, and one class are called pheromones. You may have heard of those. Pheromones are used by insects and some animals to transmit messages to other members of the same species. Um, some of these are involved in you know, sexually attracting other moths or whatever. A lot of pheromones are alkenes or alkene derivatives. And the biological activity of the pheromone depends on whether that double bond is cis or trans. So as an example, here's the structure for the sexual attractant of the female silkworm. It's a 16 carbon alkene derivative. It's got an OH group on here. That's why it's a derivative. It's got two double bonds here. And this carbon has two different things attached to it. And this carbon has two different things. So there's cis and trans going on here. And this one also can have cis and trans. So let's identify these. This, this double bond between 12 and 13, is that cis or trans? That's cis. Because we look at the hydrogens, and we see the hydrogens are on the same side of their double bond. So this bond is cis. And what about the other one between 10 and 11? That's trans. Because the hydrogens are across from each other. Now, when they, when they do things like this and put the CH2 in brackets and put a 2 around it, what they mean is that there's two CH2s here in a chain. And up here, CH2 with an 8, that means there's eight of them in a row. And we do that to just kind of shrink it down because otherwise it gets really, really long because there's 16 carbons in this guy. So if you had this same compound, but this double bond was cis instead of trans, the moths would not be attracted to it. Or if they were, it, would only be, it wouldn't be as intense. Your book has a lot more details about that. But biological systems make use of these very tiny details, these very tiny uh, differences in structures. How do they know that's the formula? They can isolate, um, separate the compounds, and figure out what their structures are. How do they capture it? Well, um, I'm guessing it involves killing moths <laughs> and extracting stuff out of them. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not a simple matter where you can just go up to a moth and swab it or something and stick it in a machine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's pretty involved but it can be done. It can determine structures of almost anything. It's really pretty interesting. Another group of naturally occurring alkenes are called terpenes. And a terpene is a, a compound that has a skeleton composed of two or more five carbon isoprene structural units. What's isoprene? Isoprene is the common name for 2-methyl-1,3-butadiene. So let's draw the structure of that. I left a little space here. So 1,3-butadiene. Well, butane has four carbons. So this is going to have four carbons. One, two, three, four. Four carbons. 1,3 means there's a double bond at 1 and at 3. And 2-methyl means that there's a methyl group on the second carbon. I don't think that's how your book drew it. But that's okay. It's the same thing. Yeah, so in the book it shows up like this. It's maybe a little prettier. I don't know. Same thing. So that's isoprene. You can connect those two things, I mean, you can connect isoprene units together and form larger molecules, and those, those are called terpenes. There's over 22,000 terpenes found in biological systems. There's lots and lots of them. And the, the characteristic odors of many trees and plants, the smells of flowers, many of these are terpenes. So here's some examples. Um, what happens is that terpene, that isoprene unit, 
it had a double bond on each end, and when they join together, the double bond goes away. So here we have um, limonene, which is the smell of lemon or oranges, and here they're showing you with these um, little red lines. This is there's one isoprene unit, and here's another one, and they're connected together. This is eucalyptus, um, mint. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's in in several different kinds of flowers. This is the natural coating on an apple. This is one of the fragrances of ginger. These have three isoprene units in them. And here's beta carotene. Beta carotene is that orange color in carrots, and it's found in other vegetables as well. And that is also a terpene. And so these are naturally occurring alkenes.